Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video on setting up this model here on iNav 2.1. Now this is a ZOHD orbit wing. Now it's fantastic on its own with its own stabilizer, but last year, about a year ago actually, I installed iNav 1.9 onto it. Now this video is meant as a companion piece to the current series that's going on, which has been iNav 2.1 onto a Vixler, because there's a couple of extra things that you need to think about when you're putting it into a wing. Plus, I've also had a request from a patron of mine, a patron called Dermot. So Dermot, this one is absolutely for you. Hopefully this will help get iNav onto your orbit wing and get you flying. Now again, if you haven't watched iNav 2.1 series, there is a link to it in the description. Go and have a watch of that first because all of the things that's in there are about th things like setting up your radio, going through and flashing the flight controller and all that kind of goodness is already covered in there. So I'm going to assume that you've kind of watched that and really focus more on some of the tips and tricks for getting this orbit set up. Now the orbit itself inside has a furious FPV F35 flight controller and that has got its own little GPS and it was all wired up in that last video. So again, I'll put a link in the description down to show how I've wired it all in. Let's focus in this video about how I've got iNav 2.1 on here and got it set up. So the first job before you do anything else, if you have a flight controller with an older version of iNav, then I would go and open that and do a couple of things. Go into the CLI, part of the configurator and click on diff and save the results out to a file. Uh, diff is saving all of the things that have changed from the default configuration. And then personally, I like to either screenshot or video record each of the setup screens so that I know what the ports were, what my settings were, how I have my OSD configured and all of that goodness as well. It's worthwhile doing this just before you start out because occasionally you will get to a point like I did in later on in this build where I think, oh, hang on a minute, my receiver's not working. Which port was it I needed for serial again? You may need to download and install an older version of the configurator to look at older iNav, but all of those are still available from the iNav repository. Again, I'll pop a link in the description. So you might need to download a 1.9 configurator to download the settings. Once you've done that, then go through the update and flash process. Make sure that you're flashing the right target for the board that you're using and update it to iNav 2.1. So the next job then is, once you've got that done, is to work your way through all of the settings on the left-hand side. I'd start at the top and work your way down. So we can see here that the FF F35 Lightning is on version 2.1, so we are good to crack, carry on. Now there's lots of stuff on the top that's red. If we go into the Setup tab, let's just reconnect again, uh, you can see here there's loads of stuff with red X's on the right-hand side, pre-arming checks. So there's lots of things that we're going to have to work our way through here because unless those are all green, it isn't going to alarm. So first job is calibration. Click into calibration, and just like we did last time, go through each of the steps, position the board in each of the orientations, and click calibrate accelerometer. Once you've got all of those done, then just double check it's moving the right way in the screen. Now I was reminded here, something I'd missed, is that I'd actually rotated my board 90 degrees in one direction, actually anti-clockwise, in order to fit it into the model. So it wasn't quite matching up. So I had to go into the board alignment and change the yaw degrees to 270, and that meant that everything was lined up but you probably won't have to do that. That was just a weird oddity of the way I had to install the flight controller into this model because I couldn't install it because of the limitation of space in the way it naturally wanted to be. So now that's at 270 degrees. Uh, the model is moving in the right way. As I move the front up the nose, it moves the right way, rocks left and right, which is really good. It's always worthwhile checking that. Next job is going into the mixer. Now the mixer, we're just gonna load a standard flying wing preset we're going to click load and apply and that's going to save and reboot it that's going to configure the outputs in the identical way to version 1.9 that we had we're probably going to have to play around with stuff in the mixer and the servo tab to get it all spot on but we'll do that in a minute i'd then select a preset to get some of the stuff done for you 600 millimeter flying wing is going to be close i'm going to click on apply another save and reboot 
and then go through and set the ports up as it was in the original version. Now I'm going to have to move mine around. UART 3 here should be serial rather than UART 5. I didn't spot this when I was actually shooting this little bit of video, but everything else seems to have come across, despite the fact that I selected full chip arrays. I'm going to disable the magnetometer. Uh, that's a terrible idea on a plane, unless your magnetometer is 100% happy. And then just going to scroll down and just check that everything else is okay while I'm here. Also, I probably should have disabled the airspeed sensor here as well, because that's currently showing red at the top on the right hand side. Uh, the GPS, I'm going to have to put in the magnetometer declination, uh, ground assistance type, uh, I'll probably put it for Europe actually. That'll probably work. We could do auto detect, but I'll tell it it's actually Europe. And then go and check everything else is happy that you are everything that you want, click on save and reboot. Now we've done that, make sure that the fail safe is set for return to home because that's kind of the whole point. I'm not going to do anything with PID tuning. So we've got, only got a couple of things here to do before we can enable the outputs and see if the servos are going to be okay on this. So I'd set up your modes as well while you're in here. Make sure that uh, you have at least a manual mode. Angle mode is also handy. A GPS loiter, GPS return to home, and another couple of switches is going to be handy for things like servo auto trim as well as auto tune. Um, just set it up so you've got those arm mode switches and several auxiliaries as well. Um, I had to change again just to set it to UART 3 to get my receiver to work. That was the only thing that it had cocked up on. So as I move everything around, I can see it all working. Make sure the middle channel values are 1500. Sticks in the top right hand position should give you maximum value for the radio. If it is, then it's working the right way. And again, I've got lots of other channels here moving around, doing different things, ready to be configured for all the modes I need for that initial flying. Last couple of jobs in here then, go through the on-screen display and set it up to the way that you like. I've pretty much kept my on-screen display the same as when I started out. I, my eyes are used to looking in particular places. I would add the pitch and roll angles somewhere on the screen just for the initial couple of flights. Just helps you trim out any uh, nose up, nose down tendencies when you're in angle mode. I'll show you a trick at the end of this video to make sure that it's pretty spot on the first time you go out. Now we've got all that stuff done and we're happy, then the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to enable the outputs. Now make sure that the prop is off and uh, next job then is to jump onto the desk and plug in the battery, fire up the radio and just check that things are working in the right direction, but the correction is as well. So here we are on the desk and uh, one of the things you'll notice is that the control surfaces in manual mode aren't working the right way around. Now in the previous videos that I've done where it's only a single output per servo, I've reversed it in the servo tab. But in the mixer we can change the weight of the individual controls that are going to each servo to sort things out. Now the way that I would recommend doing it with a wing is I would check the elevator first pull the elevator back so both the control surfaces should come up. If one of them doesn't, then change the polarity for that servo for stabilized pitch. If it's plus 50 to minus 50 and vice versa, make sure that one's happy. Uh, click save and reboot and double check it's okay. The servo tables are only read by the flight controller on a reboot. So make sure that every time you change something, click save and reboot to test it. Once I'm happy that the elevator's working, the aileron isn't. So I'm going to change the direction of the aileron mix, the stabilized roll mix for the servo that's wrong and then save that down. And then I can see that everything's working fine. Once I've got that done, then it's going into the servo tab and using the mid positions just to get the control surfaces in line with the wing itself. And once that's done, then that's in really good shape. Now you're going to rock the plane side to side in angle mode and make sure that the corrective movement that INAV is putting in is trying to push the wing down. So if you tilt the plane to the left, the right aileron should come up and vice versa. If you push the nose down, the elevons should both come up and just work your way around. I tend to put my finger on it just to feel the corrective movement. Triple check this. This is something that most people get wrong and it's something that I covered in my common INAV mistakes. So last couple of tips, just like we did last time, I'm going to cut and paste and save all of the settings that we need to change in the CLI. Again, this is all covered 
in the wiki for iNav for fixed wing and we're going to go through and make sure that the safe arm is on that the maximum inclination each side is on if you're a patreon and you want this file just to cut and paste it for iNav 2.1 save some time pop me a message go through each of the steps in this slide this is exactly the same slide as in the previous iNav 2.1 series once you've done all that then you are getting close to being ready to go out to the field to do your first initial flights. The initial flights are exactly the same with this iNav craft as it is with anyone. Fly it initially in manual mode, make sure that everything's happy, then try and angle. Then if that's happy, try it in GPS loiter. Then if that's happy, try it in GPS return to home. Use the servo auto trim. I usually fly in manual mode and just try and get it straight and level. Flick the servo auto trim to reset the midpoints of the servos for manual mode. And then once you've got everything set up and you're happy, two or three flights in, I would probably go through an auto tune and do that process just to get that dialed in as well. Last tip I'll give you on this one for all kind of flying wings and planes is most fixed wing aircraft fly in a slightly nose up attitude, wings do in particular. Now the nice thing with the ZOHD orbit, the dart and other things like that, is that they have already figured out what that slight up angle needs to be so when it's flying the camera is looking out straight and level. So the best thing to do is to make sure the wings are on the model, put it on the table, get it as level as you possibly can and put something under the nose so the nose is pointing straight out and that camera is pointing straight forward. When that's the case, then jump into the configuration screen and on there you'll probably find that the pitch and roll isn't exactly flat. They should both be pretty close to zero. So what you need to do is you need to make a note of what those two pitch and roll degrees are and then go into the configuration tab and change those two numbers for the pitch and roll. Now, because I have mine at 90 degrees from the orientation it should be, my pitch and roll numbers are slightly reversed, so I had to go through a slightly iterative process. But what you do is you, whatever the offset is for pitch and roll in the setup tab, put those numbers into the offset in the configuration tab, save and reboot and come back. And once it's within a degree or one and a half degrees of what it needs to be, when it's straight and level sat on the bench, both those pitch and roll readings are pretty much spot on in setup, then you're ready for that first flight. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested. Extra couple of tips there. One is how you go through and use the mixer with something like a fixed wing where you have multiple stabilized controls going into one servo and also an extra little tip on how you make it so it's going to fly more or less straight and level the first time out. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.